Hey, you there. Come here. Come a little closer. It's spooky month. And with spooky month come some spooky movies. The scariest thing I watched this month was Joker 2. <laughs> Start off this month strong with Pixels. I have not seen this movie probably in five years, and I absolutely loved it. It was such a fun time. There are some corny bits, and obviously I can't call this a perfect movie. I just can't justify giving it five stars or even four and a half stars on Letterboxd. But it's a really, really good movie. I really enjoyed it. The kind of comedy in the movie is very much my style of humor that I find funny. It's a lot of slapstick combined with, like, witty references. And also characters, you know, being very consistent with their style of comedy. I really enjoyed this movie. If you haven't seen it and you like video games, you really should watch this movie. It's pretty good. I gave it an 8 out of 10. Next up, I watched Five Nights at Freddy's, cause it's spooky month, and it came out about a year ago. Man, this was really boring. <laughs> this is, I think, either my second or third time watching the movie, and it just doesn't hit. It's, it's very draggy, it's very slow, especially in the middle, I'm like, oh my gosh, can, can you move along, please? There's a lot of things that don't make sense, and also, I wish they did more with the actual video game elements rather than just using the IP that is a popular video game. It was still a fine movie. I I gave it a 5 out of 10 this go around, whereas last time I believe I would have given it a 7 or a 6. So it drops the more you watch it, which is kind of sort of the indication of a not great movie. For me, typically when I rewatch things, they get better. But anyways, 5 out of 10. Next up, I watched Civil War, and this was significantly better on a rewatch. I still think there's a lot wrong with it. I still think that some editing choices were, in fact, quite confusing. I think one decision in particular in the story seemed confusing. I'm not going to go into spoiler territory for this movie. If you haven't seen it, I would recommend watching it. It's a pretty good, uh, it's a pretty good film. It... The, the ending makes a whole lot more sense on a rewatch. However, it does still feel... Um, uh, there, there's one character in particular that does something very, very uncharacteristic to the character towards the end of the movie. If you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't seen it, you probably don't and you're a little confused. But uh, a, a choice at the end, it seemed very, very weird and very off. And that's probably the biggest takeaway I have from this movie, 6 out of 10. Next up, I watched Jerry's Game, the animation. I just really enjoyed this animation. This is my first time seeing this short. It was, I believe, the short for the DVD, or I guess the VHS back then, of A Bug's Life. And I, I just really enjoyed it. I had a really fun time with it. As far as shorts go, I review shorts differently than I review movies. This is a 10 out of 10. This is dadgum. This is a 10 out of 10 short. Very, very good. Next up, I watched Joker Fully a Dumb. I know that's not the name. I don't care. This was a massive letdown. I mean, I wasn't expecting much going into this. Like, the bar was already kind of sort of on the floor. They drilled a little bit into the floor. Like, they drilled two to three feet deep. Uh, in the floor, then they pulled in a backhoe, they dug a little bit more out of the floor, and then they hit it one more time with a power drill just to get even deeper, uh, and, and that is where the, the movie ended up. The movie was not good. I get that some people are saying, oh, it was Todd Phillips' way of literally acting like the Joker, you know, he was acting like the Joker by throwing people's I have seen both very, very opposite ends of the spectrum on this movie. I've seen people absolutely love this movie. Jason Blum really, really loves this movie. I don't fully understand why, but it's okay. I We forgive him. But, man, I, th this was such a slow-moving movie 
I will say, there was one scene, at, like, I gave it a star and a half on Letterboxd, I'm just being perfectly honest, and I gave the movie a 3 out of 10, but there's a particular scene in the movie that's, like, peak storytelling, peak acting, incredible. Uh, it's the courtroom scene with, I can't remember the dude's name? Gary, that's right, yeah, it's the scene between Arthur, who is now fully in Joker mode, and Gary. Great scene best scene in the entire movie. Too much singing, the singing made me want to leap into the screen and just tear the screen apart. By the 19th song that added nothing at all to the story and just padded the runtime, I was really, really ticked off. I did kind of like the fairly shocking third act. I know it was a generally disliked thing. I did sort of like what happened at the ending, but I do not like the direction they took with the ending. If you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, I'm just confusing you. All I'm gonna say is that I'm annoyed that they waited until Christopher Nolan was gone. That's all I'm gonna say, and even that's probably a little bit too spoilery. So, 3 out of 10 film. Holy crap, I had I had forgotten about that, and now I've brought it back up in my memory again, and now I'm ticked off. Then I watched Papers, Please, the short film. While the ending is pretty sad, I won't get into spoilers, this thing had me absolutely hooked. It's a nice, f relatively fun, very well shot, like 10 to 12 minute short film that's just really good. I really enjoyed it. I didn't give it a number rating on Letterboxd here, but it was an 8 out of 10 short film. I really enjoyed it. Then I watched The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey. I have not seen this movie also in about five years, and it really holds up. It's really, really good. I love the sincerity in this movie, because pretty much every other movie on the list has some moment where it's like, oh, you're watching a movie, you're watching a movie, or it does something stupid or makes some wild or dumb, frankly, Joker 2 character decision. And this just didn't have that. It, it was a very sincere, very takes-itself-seriously movie that was really good. I enjoyed it a lot. If you haven't seen it, it's a great fantasy movie. I would go recommend you watch it. 8 out of 10 film. Then I watched Elvis. I saw Elvis last year, and I just really needed to revisit it because I wanted to revisit it. And... It's great. It's a good movie. Very sad, especially towards the end of the movie, and I would argue throughout most of the movie, relatively sad still, but the editing needs to be studied in this movie because the the timelines kind of sort of jump around some, but I was not at all confused about what time we were in. That wasn't fully the editing, I will admit, but I'm just in awe of the editing throughout this film. It is really, really solid. It's an 8 out of 10 film for me personally. Then I watched Transformers 1, and I have a new opinion. I think that all Transformers movies going forward should be animated. Because, holy crud, even though not that much transforming happened in this movie, this was solid. This was, this was a better story than any Transformers movie I've ever seen. Granted, I've only seen two of the more crap movies. I've seen Age of Extinction, and I've seen Bumblebee, and I've seen one other somewhere in there that I can't even stink and remember. This was way better. This was such a good movie. I had a really good time watching this. It's a shame it hasn't been marketed better. I've seen, like, nothing about this movie, but the people that I have seen talking about this movie love this movie and think it's great and think it's a solid piece of animation that think it's a pretty good kids' film, honestly, other than a little bit of bad language, which I will admit is absolutely hilarious in the context of the story and it's a funny movie like i've seen a lot of people didn't like the style of humor in this movie but i personally really did like the style of humor in this movie so i would give it an 8.5 out of 10 overall i want to make a full length video about this because i want this movie to get more support than it's currently getting next up i watched the bob's burgers movie I am a sucker for some Bob's Burgers, okay? I love the show, I'll admit it. And this movie manages to be a fairly cinematic movie while staying true to the characters, not completely abandoning the show. They do have to 
step away from the show format a bit because you can't really do show format in a long form movie and get it greenlit by producers so i'm glad that they didn't way far depart from the show for this or anything the animation style is a little bit different but again that's to be expected it's a theatrically released movie they can't have it looking like the kind of crude animation uh that bob's burgers is i'm not saying bob's burgers is poorly animated but they did have to touch it up and change the style slightly for the movie I still really enjoyed it. Didn't take me out of it. I was absolutely sucked into the story. It's a good story. It's a story that moves forward well, but, and it doesn't like bore you, but it also doesn't try and be super, super abstract. It does let you figure out things on your own while also telling you enough that you can still enjoy the story. I just really like this movie, okay? I get that not everybody liked it, but... I'm going to give this movie a 9 out of 10. Then I watched The Thing, and I only have one question. Can I pet that doll? 8 out of 10 film. Probably my current favorite 80s movie right now. Then I watched Don't Worry Darling. A really, really good score and really, really good acting from everybody but one person. That's all a... Uh, that's about all of the good I could say about this movie. I get that Harry Styles is not an actor primarily, but particularly at the beginning and middle of this film, at towards the end of the film, I thought he did a great job. In the first two acts of this film, he wasn't very good. <laughs> it was not particularly believable that he was actually the character that he was playing and that's a kind of common criticism I've seen about the movie so far I also think the movie basically tries to settle with being purely creepy like the actual structure of the story doesn't matter it's almost like when they were writing it they were like okay story structure throw that out the window we don't need that it's perfectly fine we're just gonna go with creepy vibes Uh, and it really didn't work especially the second act was so incredibly boring it's just creepy instance happens oh now this happens oh characters develop a little alice's character develops a little florence Pugh does a great job by the way very very little character development actually happens on screen most of the character development Uh, is implied to be off screen it's just it's a it's a very messy movie and i didn't particularly care for it okay it was not really my cup of tea next up i watched the menu holy crud so much better on a rewatch this was so much better on a rewatch i caught a whole lot more than i did before i really enjoyed this if you haven't seen it and you're looking for a good horror-ish movie it's a scary movie at times but it's also a lot of people don't call it scary at all depends on what all you like if you like a kind of more thriller type of horror movie then this is a great movie you're gonna really enjoy it it was actually really really funny i at 2 a.m in the morning had a conversation with someone about this movie because they texted and they were like Hey, I just watched that. That was kind of confusing. I don't understand the ending. And at 2 a.m. in the morning, I explained the ending to them over text. And they were like, That makes so much sense. <laughs> Which is honestly, that's kind of how I was after the first movie. At the at the or the first time I watched it. At the end of the first time I watched it, I was like, bro, what the heck did I just watch? That was so weird. In fact, when I watched it, I think I gave it like uh, 5 out of 10 the first time I saw it, but now, honestly, it's an 8 out of 10. I really enjoyed it. I understood it a whole lot more, and it doesn't, it, well, okay, it says a lot, but it's under the surface what it is trying to say, and I just really enjoyed the movie. You should go watch it if you haven't seen it. It's pretty great. Then I watched The Witch, or as intellectuals say, The Vavitch. I don't really want to go into detail about this movie for fear that I'll have a mental breakdown, so I'm just going to read you my Letterboxd review real quick. 
Come Hither is set a comical amount in this film. Is the goat the villain, or is the villain Satan? The 1600s must have really sucked for religion. The 1600s must have really sucked for everybody. Why did the dad put the axe down and not kill the goat? Why did Thomason suddenly decide to be a witch at the end? Why did they decide not to go back to their community after the first child disappears? Why do the family members get separated so easily? Why does the family hate each other? I know it's a hot take, I didn't like this film. 2 out of 10. Then I watched Skyfall, and I'm gonna be perfectly honest, there's a lot I could say about this movie, but I just want to say one thing instead. Javier Bardem has such a scary on-screen presence that it honestly should and needs to be studied. 7 out of 10 film. Then I watched Pulp Fiction, and I do kind of sort of understand why a lot of people like this movie, but... I just did, it's, it's not personally my style. I didn't really care for it that much. And I heard a really good comparison the other day. This movie in the 90s when it came out was kind of like what A24 has done in the last 10 or 15 years, making their pushing the limits movies. Uh, Pulp Fiction was, it was fine, but I just didn't personally really like it that much. I think it was 5 out of 10 for me personally. Then I watched Brothers. Oh, brother. This was a really confusing movie with just so much inconsistency that I don't really have the energy in me to talk about it. It wasn't very good. I, I'm just kind of sort of getting to the point where the Amazon comedies that I decide to watch, I'm like, I could probably better spend my time watching The Creator or catching up on Star Wars. Or watching anything else like this was just, it was such a it was such a nothing burger like nothing happens in this movie i know in the trailers i was like man this is gonna be wild they're gonna go a bunch of different places they're gonna like correct me if i'm wrong any of you who have seen brothers out there all five of you did anything happen in this movie like i swear i cannot remember what happens in this movie i saw it four days ago all I remember is the monkey being there, and I still, I still don't know why the monkey was there. It also wasn't funny, it wasn't really my style of humor. The only times I laughed were at some of Brendan Fraser's jokes, because they were just so incredibly stupid, and I did laugh when Peter Dinklage got thrown against the wall at full speed by Brendan Fraser. That was pretty dadgum funny. But yeah, this is a 3 out of 10 for me. It was a, it, it was a big stinker. I was expecting a whole lot more, and I guess I shouldn't. Then I watched Ex Machina, and Ex Machina really surprised me. It's my new favorite Alex Garland film because I didn't personally care for Annihilation that much. And while I did enjoy Civil War, I think this was better than Civil War. I think this had more to say. I think it said it better than Civil War. And cinematically speaking, I think this is a more cinematically impressive movie. Great acting. I mean, holy cow, great acting. Also, incredible visual effects. I see why it won the Oscar for Best Visual Effects. All in all, this was a, I don't want to say fun time. It was a relatively heavy movie, but it was a good watch. I would give it a 7 out of 10. And finally, we really ended the month on a stinker. I watched Memory. The Liam Neeson movie where something gets taken from him and he uses his special set of skills to take things back. Listen, come, okay, come, come closer. All right, all right. If you're gonna make a movie where literally titled Memory, okay, come a little bit closer, where the main character has Alzheimer's, you don't wait until the end of the movie. Like, I frequently throughout this movie was like, wait, how did he remember? Like, it's just aggravating. And the ending was fine. The action was abysmal. The act, there's almost no action in this entire, this is way more of a drama movie than it is an action movie. The action is terrible when it's done. Honestly, this movie is going on my list of, I plan on making a list soon, literally called Movies I Will Forget I Watch The Day After. And that's just because there was nothing impressive about this movie, which I hate to say about movies because making movies is not easy, okay? These people are doing things that I could not do, simply put, but 
I don't know. It's just, it was, it was so disappointing. Nothing happened in it. Like, legitimately. Okay, some happened, but it was like, oh, that happened. Next scene, like, we have to, you know, get to it. Not only was it very boring, I was, like, constantly checking how much longer I had of this. And about 45 minutes in, I was like, do I want to stop watching it? I, I, I was like, nothing, n nothing of interest can be gained from this. This has been done better on so many le Anyway, I'm gonna stop crapping on it. It's a 3 out of 10 for me, personally. But yeah, that's everything I watched in October. Feel free to comment down below what all you watched, and maybe I'll respond to your comment. Maybe I'll feature your comment in an upcoming short. Thank you all so, so much for watching. My voice is dying, if you can't tell. Comment the, the, the pie emoji. Just find a pie emoji and comment it in comment section down below. Hoping to watch a whole lot more in November. I kind of sort of fell off in the, the middle of the month this month, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do better next month. Okay, bye.